Good evening, everyone, and welcome to one of our expert series of webinars. My name is Elizabeth Ivory, and I'm Head of Marketing at Folans. And we really appreciate you giving us your time this evening, as I'm sure you're very tired after a long day in the classroom. So we have a lot of great updates for you today, um, and we promise to have you out in an hour. So first up, we have Dr. Alice Darcy from Steam who will give you a summary of how to engage fun and hands-on learning in your everyday science teaching. And Alice has lots of years of experience working closely with primary school teachers and principals and helping them to help children to release their full potential in the classroom. Then we have Ethan McGrath, one of our experienced authors, who will take you through the unique features which Explorers has to offer for SESC. Then we'll have a WISP doctor of Phillips Primary Atlas and My Wellbeing Diary from Kira Walsh and Kerry Ward, who are both members of our primary commissioning team. Then we'll have a very short prize for all, followed by a question and answer session. So throughout this evening, if you have any questions at all, just pop them in the chat and we'll get them at the very end and we'll try and cover as many of the questions you have as possible. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Alice Darcy. Thanks, Elizabeth. I just checked that I have control. Okay, there we go. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, hi everybody. Um, thank you so much to Folins for inviting me back. I'm delighted to be here and thanks everybody for coming. Um, so I'll get straight into it. Um, I run a company called STEAM Education and we our main function is to inspire children to love STEM and art subjects. Um, so I'm just gonna take you through a little bit about me, a little bit about what STEAM Education is, the research behind it and why we'd use that approach and then talk about using STEAM approaches to enhance your science teaching. Uh, we also have a link to a sample lesson that Elizabeth will share with you so you can try it out for yourself. So uh, just a little bit about me first. Um, I'm a kind of a mixed bag. I'm part scientist, part educator, part creative type, um, real believer in lifelong learning and really always curious and excited about learning new things and approaching things in a different way. So um, for the last seven years now, we've been channeling that uh, with a multidisciplinary team into programs that we run for uh, largely upper primary school, but also expanding to the lower ages. So STEAM, if you haven't heard before, uh, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math. So most people have heard of STEM, but really the arts and design and creativity are really important uh, across the board so important to science, important to STEM, as well as important to the arts sector. Um, so well, by the end of this school year, and it's been quite a difficult year for everyone, um, we will have worked with about nearly 15,000 children in about 150 primary schools around the country. What we do mainly is connect primary schools with uh, STEM companies, provide the programs, and then the companies also provide the scientist or engineer or whatever STEM professional to co-teach the programs. So if anyone is interested in getting involved with that, um, my contact details will be at the end and you can give us a shout. Um, so first off, what is a STEAM approach to education? Um, well, it's one in which we engage creativity, really important creativity in and through all subjects. We really focus on developing critical thinking skills, developing connections across the curriculum, uh, across different people, across different age groups. Um, so a very holistic approach. It's participatory is one of the most important things about it. So very participatory and collaborative. So we're not really in the business. Uh, we're, our, our ethos is that we would like each child to be empowered to fulfill their, their potential, but also each child to be empowered to work in diverse teams um, when they're older. So it's not about being the brains of the operation or it's not about um, being the absolute best at science itself. Like most uh, careers now involve a diverse team of people working from different skill sets. So we really try and um, encourage that. Um, there's loads of hands-on learning, learning by doing. We try to make everything relevant to children and most importantly, that it's fun and challenging to be involved in. So 
steam is an approach that's increasing around the world um we're part of a european project an erasmus project uh, about improving stem learning experiences in primary school through steam and particularly looking at inclusion um, we will hopefully be able to offer some free teacher training opportunities through that scheme. They're a little bit delayed due to COVID, but if you um, connect with us on social media, you'll see updates about that. So please, again, contact us if you want to be involved. Um, so now, how do we engage with schools? Uh, well, we make easily implementable curriculum linked courses um, called STEAM in a box. So we have science in a box, engineering in a box, maths in a box. We've also climate action in a box going to be launched for September. Um, and all of these are helping to teach children to think outside the box and linking all the subjects and approaching it in the in the STEAM way that we that we like and the children and teachers really um, appreciate. So just to give you an example of a couple of them, we have at the we have a teacher led programs and then we have programs that are co-taught by scientists or engineers or mathematicians. So again, you can have a look at those on our website. And they're also all available in Irish. Now, the research behind STEAM as an educational approach um, is important in that it will kind of help direct, it directs us and it can help direct you to enhance, enhance your science teaching opportunities in the classroom in quite straightforward ways. So I, I, just to start off, I would say that science, I think, is quite misunderstood as a field. Um, I think a lot of people still think that it's boring. It's all like fact based. It's quite distant. Um, however, we have been over the last year in really involved in a huge scientific experiment on a global scale. And I think maybe people are starting to appreciate the intricacies of it a bit more and the the depth and breadth of what is required to kind of work in that field um, and to make progress. So if we look at science in a different way, we can make it much more open, more fun, more hands on, more participatory, uh, diverse, meaningful and relevant to everybody involved. Um, so that's what we do in our programmes. And here today, I'm just going to talk about three particular elements of STEAM and of science that we think are really important. So three C's, creativity, critical thinking, and connections. Um, now, all three are critical to developing competencies in for science careers, but they're also fundamental life skills, I really believe, and they're relevant all across the curriculum. And so there's no reason why you can't interweave these in your teaching of uh, science. So to start off with creativity, um, creativity, is inherent in human brains so if if anyone has been ever told that they're not creative or you think you're not creative i would strongly encourage you to uh just re rethink that mindset um creativity really needs to be supported and encouraged a lot more i think in education and particularly with regard to science um if as jean piaget said the principal goal of education is to create people who are capable of doing new things not simply repeating what other generations have done. So people who are creative, inventive, and discoverers. So creativity, um, Sir Ken Robinson, the educationalist who recently died, um, would, would have said that creativity is now as important in education as literacy. Um, so it increases people engagement, really helps learning to stick, it's fun. And it applies, as I said, across the board, not just confined to the arts, which we also love. Um, there is also a lot of research in neuroscience and developmental psychology that would support early interventions. And I'm sure you all know this as primary school teachers, that the earlier we can get engaged and empower children to learn, the, the better their out outcomes. So engaging creativity and diversity is actually good for the physical brain development, as well as for you know, your future opportunities. So creativity, if we look at it, is the, the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. So that's always been part of exploration and discovery. Um, I've put a link there to another Erasmus um, project called Creative Little Scientists. So anyone in the early end of the primary school, um, you could have a look at that. There's a lot of resources there that you could, um, a lot of science and arts mix resources for the classroom. 
Um, but one of the things I really want to talk about today is in the scientific method and how the, the method and the skills are taught. So like the nature of science is really important. Um, there tends to be a lot of focus on experiments and activities um, and fair testing and that kind of thing, which is all brilliant. Um, however, we do have a lot of space in the scientific method to address different skills and to expand out how science is taught, particularly in the areas of um, observation. So that's an easy place to start. You don't need any uh, highly technical equipment to do it. Uh, it's a key element of science, but again, cross-curricular and a life skill. So developing observation skills can include any and all of the senses. You can do your observations through literacy, through verbal descriptions, writing, poetry, writing stories about whatever scientific topic that you're talking about. Um, you can do it through painting, drawing, um, through all kinds of actions, um, breathing, nature walks. Essentially, you want to embody the science experience in other areas of your work. Um, so again, through sports, so like what happens in your body when you run, when you are really calm. Um, we can also use imagination of activities in different scenarios. So even imagining that your classroom is in space or underwater, um, how would things like gravity work differently in that scenario? So really it's about expanding um, your mindset and your the opportunities to use what you have around you. We also can look at observation skills through the lens of empathy and just addressing a different perspective. So if I was a polar bear right now, what would I be going through? Um, and obviously, if you have additional resources like microscopes and telescopes, you can, you can the end of that sentence fell off, um, you can use those as well. But there's an awful lot of stuff that you can actually access now online or just in more basic skills that will support your science teaching. So here's just on the polar bear theme, a couple of things that I pulled out, all observation skills involved um, about polar bears. I'll just, and if you want to see a real polar bear or if you're working on any kind of animal theme or habitat, there is nearly a, a cam feed on the internet for all of them. So I'll just play a tiny clip of that there so you can have a look at some live polar bear action, well, not live, but recorded live. Um, so there are many ways you can bring in observation and skills uh, from real life scientists into the classroom at very low cost and um, integrate them into your lessons. OK, there we go. Um, you can also involve sound and music in your science lessons. So we're going to hear polar bears roaring there. Um, some thermal imaging of polar bears in the dark. Um, you can bring polar bear animal lessons into your geography, talk about movement and migration. And there you can see a polar bear having a CT scan on the other side. So again, uh, across the curriculum, health, tech, engineering, all of these things can be integrated around a, a single theme and really focusing on observation skills so you don't need a lot of equipment. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the slides. So the next kind of most important thing, I guess, that we like to focus on is critical thinking. Critical thinking skills, again, apply to all subjects. So it's the ability to think clearly and rationally, understanding logical connection between ideas, the ability to engage in reflective and independent thinking. And it's not just for science. Um, in a sense, it's a sort of an applied cop on type of scenario. So, um, Henry David Thoreau describes it in this way, which I think is really effective, which is that it, think for yourself or others will think for you without thinking of you. So really when we're teaching science, it's all about engaging the children in discussing how different uh, scenarios and different scientific applications um, are relevant to their lives, for example, in terms of determining your own health outcomes. So in the classroom, what you do is, as children do anyway, question absolutely everything. Um, question, 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 but listen also to the to the children's response. And sometimes it, you'll find that it, the process, the question that they ask, you really need to listen to what is the process in their brain that 
gets them to that question. So there's often more to the question than, than meets the eye. Um, and then the, our next um, thing that we focus on is connections. So curriculum connections are one thing. So topic webs, mind maps, linking things all across the curriculum. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with lots of these, but you can, like you could go quite easily from looking at polar bears to ending up in sort of the politics of who owns the Arctic and Antarctic. So there's endless resources out there. I understand completely there's so much time involved in looking them up and putting them together, but it is possible and it's possible to make really interesting lessons um, in that way. Um, the other aspect of connections is human connections. So get other people involved. It's really useful to help nurture and create positive, stable relationships with additional role models. So any kind of STEM companies that you have in your area, get involved, give them a ring, see if they're interested in helping out, sending you a scientist or an engineer. It's really important to diversify and increase the exposure um, and engagement of people and skills that children might not have experienced before. Um, and again, role play it, be the scientist for the day. So we connect by matching STEM co-teachers with companies, but I mean, there's loads of people out there ready and willing and happy to come in and help you out on specific science activities. Not this year, maybe, but hopefully in September again. So just to summarize that, apologies for the slight technical issues. Um, for more fun, hands-on, participatory, creative and meaningful science, our top kind of five tips for it would be so to develop strong observation skills through all the senses, all the subjects, and it can be used through all media. Um, to engage creativity, um, they're not just nice to add, they are actually really necessary to, to STEM careers as well as arts. Um, think critically and embrace the questions. So bring them to life with things like role plays, walking debates, and visitor discussions. Um, make connections so everything and everyone is connected to science so have a go at connecting them and let the children have a go at leading the direction of those connections and really importantly don't be afraid of not knowing all of the answers because nobody does and uh, that's all part of the process um, so I hope that has been some way useful I'll just play a little clip of some of the stuff that we do and then I'm going to hand you back to Elizabeth. should have some music over it which uh, I don't think anyone can hear uh, I'm not going to sing so um, this is the video is just shown a few different types of lessons and approaches that we use uh, living things health sciences um, really really interesting hands-on good stuff that involves real science um, implements and activities and people um, to get the kids involved and they tend to like it, so we hope you do too. I'll give thanks it back to you. Yeah, thanks a million. That was really great. Lots of great advice and, and tips there and ideas. Um, and as Alice said, we'll share the video for the whole webinar and um, include a link to one of the STEAM education lesson plans as well. So I'm now going to hand over to Aoife McGrath, who is one of our author team for Explorers. Um, and Explorers, as I'm sure you know, is our skills-focused thematic program for SESE. So let me hand you over now to Aoife McGrath. Sorry, guys, there's just seems to be delays and then there we go thanks elizabeth um hi everybody good evening uh thanks for taking the time to listen this tonight um I'm, my name is Eve mcgrath as elizabeth said i am a full-time primary school teacher and so proud to be one of the authors of Poland's explorers um i know what it's like to be back in the classroom after all these chopping and changing lockdowns so thanks so much for taking this time so I just want to talk you through Explorers and what Explorers can offer us as teachers in the classroom. With classroom life being so time poor, as we all know, meaningful integration between history, geography and science 
is essential so we can make the most valuable use of the SESE time available to us. Explorers is a really practical programme. It's practical for our pupils because they're engaging in all that wonderful hands-on learning that um, Alice was talking about in her presentation. But it's also practical for us, the teachers, because everything we need to deliver the programme is in one place. It's highly supported in the teacher's guide. So it makes it really achievable and easy for us to delve into all those SESE topics in our classroom. Explorers is full of digital content that has been custom made to be age appropriate for each level of the primary school. And the digital elements play a meaningful role in all the learning. They're not just a little add on at the end of your unit. The content is spiraled, so the pupils are really organic, organically developing their knowledge and skills as they move through the primary school. What I love most about Explorers is the robust content that is fresh and engaging and meaningful and up to date for the pupils we're teaching this year in 2021. And the fact that the programme is completely rooted in the skills of the primary school curriculum. An SESE programme has to have skills development or else you're just doing more literacy work with your pupils. Sometimes skills can be a little bit daunting for teachers to dive into, but everything is so organic within the Explorers programme that it's easy to achieve your skills development. So just to talk you through the programme components, so each level is a little different to suit pupils' ability at those stages. So for junior infants and senior infants, we have a digitally led programme. So here there's custom made age appropriate content digitally created for every topic. So these include videos, animations, stories, interactive posters and games. And all that then is related to and linked to the hands-on learning that's happening in your class. And it's all then supported in the pupil book, which gives the pupils a place to reinforce the topics they're learning and record their little experiments and investigations. For first and second class then, we're moving on to a print-led programme because here at this age, the pupils can read better. So we have our visually appealing student books that provide opportunity after opportunity for skills development and are packed with interesting and enjoyable and relatable content for the pupils. And all that work then is supported by the custom made digital content once again for this level. To make integration as seamless as possible, all the work for junior infants to second class is organised around 10 themes, as you can see here. So each theme is then explored through the lens of history, geography and science. The same themes are revisited in the same order each year, which is so useful if you're in a multi-class setting. You're covering different topics, of, co of course, but always consolidating and expanding on the knowledge and skills the pupils have already developed. For third to sixth class, then, we have our pupil books, which include a combined geography and science book with a separate history book for each class. And of course, the content between the books at each level is paired and integrated throughout. And then all the work from the pupil book is supported um, with your digital, custom made digital content again, as well as a list of curated web links, which I'll talk about a little bit later on and they're available as clickable links on Folands Online and also in the Teacher's Guide. So just to mention the Teacher's Guide, this is everything you need to deliver the Explorers programme in your class. So we have our yearly schemes and our skills overview, which give you a glance of what you're going to be teaching throughout the year. And you can see that everything is covered in a really broad and balanced manner. And these overviews and schemes are so handy if you're developing your whole school plan for SESE. And then for the meat of the lesson, you have your editable unit plans. So here you have all your hands on lesson suggestions, your tried and tested web links that I mentioned, background information for every topic, Ashter links for the infants and so much more. And as I mentioned, these are editable so you can um, chop and change these to suit the pupils that are in front of you each year. 
So Explorers is filled with unique features that you won't find in other SCSE programs. So first of all, to mention the digital content, at every level, it plays a really meaningful role in the learning. So first, I want to show you an example of an animated story from a junior infant lesson on the theme of water. So this is a geography lesson. Ricky, Ricky, another raindrop. Come on, it's about to rain. That's why the sky is so dark. It's all the raindrops, right? Like it all. Let's go. Watch out. Roof ahead. Now, down the drain pipe. See you at the bottom. Whee! So that's Ricky. I have a son myself who's in junior infant and he loves watching things like Pokemon. But since he discovered these explorers animations, this is what he's regularly looking to watch. So you can just imagine how engaging they will be for the young pupils in your junior classes. For third to sixth class then, every unit starts with a digital stimulus. So this is an image up on your interactive whiteboard with a set of accompanying questions. So that's there to set the scene, to motivate interest, to establish prior knowledge, and to get the pupils to really start using their skills right from the outset of the lesson. In the teacher's guide, I've also mentioned that we have these list of curated web links because we know there is a huge amount of digital content available freely to you online for any topic you'd ever possibly want to teach in SCSE. The problem is that it would take you hours in the evening to trawl through all that content to find something that's suitable to link with your lesson. So the good news is myself and the other explorers authors have done the work for you. We've spent the time going through the internet, finding videos and artifacts and anything you could need that will link and play a meaningful role in the lesson, not just a little add-on for you. And we've made these into a list on your teacher's guide, but also these clickable links on Folans Online. So you'll find YouTube videos, you'll find maps and diagrams, history artifacts, and then trusted websites that the pupils can engage with for further learning. So they're so, so useful. I suppose one thing as one of the Explorers authors that I am so proud of is the fact that skills development plays a central role, a central role in all the units of Explorers. So for junior infants to second class, skills development is built into the content of the lessons throughout. So even at this young age, the pupils are being enabled to think as historians, geographers and scientists while they're doing their observations, investigations, their design and make activities, as you can see here. For third to sixth class then, we've addressed skills in a number of ways. So first of all, we've got um, some pages here from a fourth class history book, the pupil book, and we've highlighted the little red boxes. Now, these little red boxes we call skills stickers, and they appear on nearly every page of every book from third to sixth class. So what they are, they're little short, snappy, in-context skills activities. So the pupils are always actively engaged with what they're reading and never just passively reading the text. So you can see here they're doing exam the evidence and a little history hunt. So it's quick, you do the activity and you move on. At the end of every unit then you've got your page of activities. So we've got our um, fact finding and explore more questions. And then we've always got two curriculum based skills activities as well. So in this particular unit, they're using evidence and synthesis and communication. So you can be really assured that throughout the program, the broad spectrum of curriculum skills is addressed in a really balanced manner. And then finally, in addition to all our regular unit lessons, there are four dedicated skills spread in every book from third to sixth class. So these deal with the key skills such as chronology, evidence, map work, working scientifically. And the spreads are used as explicit lessons in themselves, but also as reference sections that the pupils will come back to time and time again. When it comes to the content of Explorers, of course we've included the tried and tested topics that you know and love to teach, so good old favourites. 
But we've kind of taken a fresh approach to these to give them a new lease of life in your classroom, as you can see here. And then we've included brand new topics, which are current and relatable and up to date for the pupils we're teaching in this day and age. Topics such as communication in the digital age, sustainability, robotics will really resonate with the pupils in our classes. Throughout the series, design pays, plays a major role in bringing the content to life for our pupils, while always ensuring that the pages aren't too text heavy. Because I know if I put a page of text in front of any pupil in my class, it's off-putting for them. Children need design and they need imagery to engage them. So in Explorers, everything has a purpose. Each box, each image, each map, each piece of artwork has been really carefully selected to further pupils' learning. So there are no fillers on any page, and this will really, really appeal to your visual learners. Another design feature that will appeal to your visual learners are the timelines that appear throughout the history books. So here we're drawing attention to the key information that the pupils will be exploring while also developing their time and chronology skills. You couldn't teach SDSE without engaging in local studies. So when we were developing Explorers, we had to think of a way to ensure that Explorers could be local to you wherever you are in Ireland. So from junior infants right up to sixth class, we've picked topics that can be localised to your area. So we've picked generic sites like post boxes, grasslands, churches. These can be found locally all over Ireland. We also provide lots of suggestions in the teacher's guide for adapting topics to your local area. And we consciously included examples. If we needed a specific example, we made sure that the choice of examples we used throughout the series were spread throughout the country. So somewhere in Explorers, you should be able to find a feature that's local to you. Based on teacher feedback, we're delighted to be adding three new resources to the Explorers programme for 2021. So we have designed digital STEM challenge cards for pupils from first to sixth class to support pupils in developing their science, technology, engineering and math skills. So they'll be solving problems like, can you make a strong and stable bridge from spaghetti? Can you protect an egg from breaking? So each challenge includes a digital display with all the information the pupils need. And there's an option to level up or simplify within the challenges so you can differentiate appropriately in your class. Or again, if you're teaching in a multi-grade setting, you can you know, have all the pupils doing the same activity, but at the appropriate level for them. And of course, there's comprehensive notes for each challenge um, available to the teacher. The second new resource are our termly quizzes. Again, these are for first to sixth class. So these allow the pupils to revise the content of Explorers and provide you with a means of informal assessment while still being a fun whole class activity. And then the other um, new resource we're adding are the formal assessments. Now these are printable tests and they're for third to sixth class and they're editable so that you can chop and change as you need and the sample answers are available to the teachers. So these will be really useful for doing formal assessments on your senior class. So just to summarise, um, Explorers is a really current, relatable and robust SESE programme. It's going to provide you with the right blend of print and digital at each class level. And it is a skills focused programme, not just another non-fiction literacy text, but for you, the teacher, it is practical and it is achievable and it is supported in every way to make SESE exciting and engaging for you and for the pupils in your class. Thank you so much for listening. I'll hand you back to Elizabeth. Thanks a million, Aoife. I'm sure everyone will agree that Explorers has everything you need to teach SCSE. Um, I'll just take back control here. So next up, we have both Kara Walsh and then Kerry Ward, who will give a summary of the latest edition of Philip's Irish Primary Atlas and our Atlas Hunt, and Kerry will cover my well-being diary. So I'll just hand over control to, to Kira. Thanks, Mel Elizabeth. 
Um, as Elizabeth said, I'm Kira Walsh. I am a commissioning editor on the primary team in Poland. And it was my pleasure to work on a new edition of our Phillips Irish Primary Atlas and also our Atlas Hunt activity book this year. So I'm just going to show you just some of the highlights of what we've included in the new editions. And then you can check them out yourself um, on Poland's.ie as well. So we brought together the expertise of Philips, uh, who have obviously expertise in maps, um, and that with the um, expertise of Dr. Susan Pike in geography education. So Susan was our geography advisor for the uh, Atlas itself and the author of our new edition of Atlas Hunt. So what's new in the Irish Primary Atlas? Well, it has everything that you know and love from previous editions. Now with completely up-to-date facts and figures, using the EU spread there as an example, because obviously, as you can see, uh, the United Kingdom is no longer part of that map, um, but also every other detail about you know, population statistics and so on, all up-to-date. So you're gonna get the most up-to-date, um, accurate figures you can. We also have more maps than any other primary atlas, including for those of you using explorers, which Aoife has just been talking about, uh, detailed maps of every country that is studied in the explorers program. So it's a nice um, atlas to use alongside explorers. We also have more photographs than any other primary atlas to bring the people and places within the atlas to life. Um, and they've all been carefully chosen so that they uh, represent a balanced view of the world. We have new content as well we've added in. So we've got content on map projections and how maps are created. We have historic maps of Ireland and Europe for the first time and new thematic maps uh, with relevant topics such as carbon dioxide emissions and population in proportion. Then the Atlas Hunt itself has been completely transformed so that it's really meaningful for children um, and caters very well to the geography curriculum. We've got even more open-ended activities that can be personalized to children. For example, this spread which, um, they, on, which they can, um, on which they can map their connections with the world. We've got support for inquiry-based learning and investigations. Then we also have extension activities on almost every page so that they can extend their learning beyond the book itself and a handy new glossary on the back page as well. In addition to the updates to the Atlas itself and Atlas Hunt, we are introducing some extra teacher support online for the first time, including ebook versions of both the Atlas and Atlas Hunt for ease of use in the classroom, so you can put them up on the whiteboard. Um, and also we have teacher notes for getting the most out of the Atlas and Atlas Hunt in your classroom a progression framework with map-based activities from junior infants right the way up to sixth class, and some web links to some really great online resources that you can use for map work. So the Atlas um, and Atlas Hunt, they're available um, for third to, or usable in third to sixth class. You just need the one set and you can use it the whole way through senior primary. Uh, they can be bought together or separately, so whatever suits your situation best. Um, and Atlas Hunt, while it is a perfect partner for the Phillips Irish Primary Atlas, it can be used with any other atlas or indeed online maps if that's what your school are using. So drop over to folands.ie and you can take a look inside them yourself and find out more. I'm going to take control now. And I am going to take you all through uh, a very quick summary of our new wellbeing program, My Wellbeing Diary for Junior Infants through to Sixth Class. My name is Kerry, and I was the editor on this program. And after working on it for over a year, I have to tell you, my wellbeing has never been better. So, why is it important to adopt a wellbeing program now? As I'm sure you're all aware, well-being right now is a very hot topic. Um, it's also uh, required um, in schools, and schools are required to have um, a self-evaluation uh, well-being promotion process in place by 2023. Um, so it's a great time to take on a well-being program. Our program, My Wellbeing Diary, is very comprehensive. It contains uh, a really colourful and fun uh, pupil book 
Um, there are four pupil books, one for junior infants and uh, senior infants, one for first and second, uh, one for third and fourth, and one for fifth and sixth. And these feature our very cute characters, uh, Lan, Obi, Appa, and Pip. The programme also has a set of breathing and meditation videos, which are age appropriate. Um, and there's a range of videos co covering junior infants through to sixth class. They come with easy to use instructional PowerPoints and a very comprehensive online teacher's guide. So as I said, this is the wellbeing policy statement and framework uh, which schools need to adopt. And this fully supports, uh, and we developed the programme uh, to support this framework. So the format of the pupil book, as I said, you've got four books and they are designed for daily use. The diary entry pages can be used every day and they only take five minutes. And then there are also 10 learning module pages, which are designed to be used at different points throughout the year. For the younger classes, the diary entry pages require children to identify how they feel every day, to write about strong feelings they experience during the week, or to complete a mindful activity such as identifying positive things about themselves or something good that happened to them during the week. You can see examples of the pages here for infants and first and second class. And the purpose of these pages is really to encourage children to pay attention to how they're feeling and get used to checking in with their emotions regularly. This is the basis of emotional self-regulation and is particularly helpful for children who may otherwise be disruptive or have trouble uh, checking in with and regulating their own emotions. Using the pages in the morning is also a great way to get children into the frame of mind for a day of learning, uh, to get them settled and to get them checking in with themselves. In the older classes then, children are encouraged to pay attention to their thoughts as well as their feelings and to identify positive experiences and also to practice gratitude. These activities are great for developing self-awareness and cultivating mindfulness and a positive mindset. As I said, the pages take only five minutes to complete every day. They can be done in school or they can be done at home. And they're great for developing self-awareness, uh, which is so important as children get older and may struggle with negative thoughts. And we address that a little bit more in depth in our learning module pages. So you can see here the learning module pages from one of the junior books. They're designed to be used once a month and uh, we have suggested an order, but you could address these at different times in the year uh, as suits your classroom. So here's an example of one of the learning modules for infants developing empathy. The same topics recur throughout the books, but they spiral up as the children go from infants through to sixth class. Here for first and second class is a unit on developing resilience and a growth mindset. We also have topics such as challenging automatic negative thoughts, managing the body's response to stressful situations, fight or flight, and topics that are more tied in with the SBHE curriculum, such as exercise, sleep, uh, eating well, and using the internet safely. There is a set of breathing and meditation videos accompanying the pupil books. These are all about three to five minutes long and they're designed to be used every day in the class. They encourage mindfulness, which is so important for developing emotional literacy and self-regulation. They help children to manage their anxiety and they create a sense of calm in the classroom, which I'm sure we all need these days. The instructional PowerPoints mean that the learning modules are really easy to teach. As you can see here, there are screenshots of the different slides in the PowerPoint included in the teacher's guide with a detailed description of how you can talk the child through the lesson and how uh, you can tie your PowerPoint in with the content in the pupil book. The teacher's guide also contains a yearly plan as well as information about how the content maps to the SBHG curriculum. This makes it really easy to use the programme alongside any existing SPHE programme you're using in your classroom, such as Walk Tall or Stay Safe. 
With My Wellbeing Diary, you can be reassured that you have a complete evidence-based solution for well-being and the development of mindfulness in your classroom. Thank you. I'll hand that back over now to Elizabeth. Thanks a million, Kerry. Thanks, Kerry and Kara. That was excellent. Um, just to let you all know that we have ebooks of all our books and sample of the digital resources that go along with each of the programmes up on folans.ie. So if you go on to folans.ie, search for the programme you're particularly interested in and you'll be able to try out some of the digital resources for yourself in the classroom. And also don't forget that your local Folans rep is available for calls, video calls, or appointments if that suits and they're flexible to book these appointments at a time that suits you so all your rep details are also available on folans.ie and they can arrange samples of the different programs for you as well so just before um, we go on to our question and answer session and our prize draw um, we were hoping to ask your valuable opinion on our teacher's yearbook, which we know is very popular. Um, we've done lots of different research on the yearbook and we're trying to establish which is the favourite layout for the days of the week and the information and how much space you want. So I'm going to show you now three different options and then we'll pop up a poll and you can vote on your favourite one. So first up, we have option one, which is where the days of the week are spread across two pages. So a double page spread. So you can see you've Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then notes and reminders just across two pages. Option two gives a little bit more space. So they're spread, the week um, is spread across three pages in a horizontal style like this. And then finally, it's again three pages but with a vertical style so Bridget if you can pop up the poll there and if I can ask you all just to click on which option is your favorite that would be fantastic we'll share the results actually in um, when we send out the email with with the recording rather than um, delaying people anymore great so we have taken a draw from all the attendees here this evening and we two winners we have Sinead, or sorry, Sarah Walpole from Kilkenny. And Sarah, you've won the luxury food and wine hamper and a class set of explorers. And then we have Joan Glynn in Galway, and you've won one of this year's yearbooks for September and a class set of explorers as well. So we'll be in touch with you over the next couple of days and arrange delivery of those. So congratulations, Sarah. And Joan. So now if I can ask all the panellists um, to join me on camera and I'll put the different questions. We've had a number of questions in actually and um, I'll just put different questions to each of our panellists. Actually sorry I see the poll results now and I think the majority 44% preferred the double page spread so thanks a million for taking part in the poll. So first up with our questions, we have a question for um, Eva, Eva McGrath. If, if you could just explain the skill spread that you um, presented for third to sixth class, if you could just give a little bit more information on that, Eva, that, that would be great. Yeah, so every um, history book for third to sixth class has 16 regular units. So there are normal topics that come from the curriculum, um, strands and strand units. And then the combined book has 20 of those um, topic lessons. Um, so some are combined geography and science, some are standalone geography, some are standalone science. So there's kind of 16 units covering strand and strand units for each subject. And then in the book, there are also these four spreads. So if I could, let me just see if I have a book that I could hold up. I don't, sorry, but it's just two pages. So the units um, are usually across four pages, but it's just two pages side to side. And if you're dealing with something like chronology, it could be something as simple as teaching the children how to read Roman numerals at the younger classes. Um, for the 
you know, working scientifically, things like fair testing and things like that come up. And um, Kira, have you anything else to add to that? It's just really useful because yeah. the pupils will be, um, you know, these are the little skills that we expect them to know, like reading things like A, D and B, C in history. They pop up in the lessons, but they're not explained anywhere in a lot of the books. So these are just explicit places to explain those things that they can refer back to then when they pop up in other units. Yeah. Sorry, I think, Kira. No, I was going to say, I think you've summarised it really well, Aoife. So they're, they're just um, key skills that can be used across every topic. Really. So in for geography, you've got map work and measuring. For science, you have work and scientific. And then, as Aoife said, for history, you'd have things like time and chronology or using sources. So just really useful skills content that can be applied to any unit. Right. Um, Alice, this question is for you. Um, are any of the um, STEAM in a box available in Irish at all, or any of the lessons? In Irish, yeah, all of them are available in Irish. So um, it's all the way our system works is we send you the box and everything, all the lessons come on a PowerPoint. Um, so all of the PowerPoint lessons will be translated into Irish. And then sometimes, depending on a sponsor, if you're working with a company or a philanthropic sponsor, we might actually be able to get you a few Irish scientist or an engineer to go with it. That's a little bit more difficult, but for the teacher-led versions, yeah, we have all of them in Australia. Brilliant. Um, and this one's for um, Kira. Are the three new items for the 2021 digital elements available with the current books, or do you need to purchase a new, a new book? Oh yeah, no, nothing new required. If you're already using Explorers and you have um, access to resources online, they'll be up online in the next few weeks, and we'll be sending out um, an email to everybody to let them know as well. Once uh, so they're good to go even before the end of the school year. Um, and obviously, anyone who buys Explorers new uh, for next year, they'll get to them as well. Great. Right. Um, another question for Eva there about Explorers Tier to Six. Is it a combined book for all SESE areas? No, it's combined geography and science, and then it's separate history, but the topics are paired throughout. So, um, whatever is coming up in geography and science, there is frequently a link to that in history. So, if we're studying the Romans in history, we could be doing Italy in geography. Um, so it's two books, geography and science in one book across 20 units and history in another book across 16 units. And combined for junior to second class actually as well. So the, all of the all of the SESE. Um, I have a detailed question here on multi-class. So I'm teaching in a multi-class junior infants to second class. Obviously, it wouldn't be possible to cover the two Explorer books in the classroom. Would you recommend using a first or second class book, and then adding in some junior and senior infants or, or vice versa. Yeah, well, if you did want to use two levels of it in the class, it has a thematic approach. So you are teaching the same topic with just the little activities being different. So, you know, of all the SESE programs, this is the one where you could do two different levels if you want to junior and seniors on one and first and second on the other because they will be covering the same themes in the same order and um, I, I suppose because the books develop their spirals and it's very organic that whatever level you pick it would be accessible to your pupils and again in your stem your new digital stem challenges you've got that level up and simplify option so they can all be doing those activities at their own own level so it's certainly doable Right. Um, and then a couple of questions here, Kerry, for you on the Wellbeing Diary. Um, would you recommend the Wellbeing Diary is taught under the SPHG curriculum? Well, it's fully matched to the SPHG curriculum, so um, everything is there to enable you to do that if you want to. Um, it doesn't have, it doesn't go as in-depth on certain topics that are covered in, say, Walk Tall or Stay Safe. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be a full replacement for an SPHE programme, but it could definitely be taught alongside or under the curriculum, yes. I'm actually and using it with my second class currently, and it's working really well. Um, you know, we, we're still doing our Stay Safe separately, but it is fabulous, and they love 
the belly breathing exercises it's it really has made a difference this year yeah it's it's a really lovely program like it's it's very sweet colorful fun um i actually have a niece who's four and uh, i've been working through the junior infants and senior infants book with her and she just loves it loves the characters and finds it really engaging so yeah it's really appealing and it's quick and easy so you know it's not taking yeah more time in our already overburdened day yeah um, another question here, I'm not sure, here and Alice, I suppose, I know, is there any overlap between the steam boxes and exploring? Just one of the questions that came in. They're complementary, I suppose, is how you... Yeah, complementary. Not a huge overlap, I guess, because we've gone quite specific on particular elements that you can see if you look on our website, you can see the in each box is kind of five lessons uh, together in a team. So let's say we have introduction to human biology. So in, you can look at the list of lessons in advance or even just give it a shake out and you can advise. So like if you've already done three body systems and you're in fifth class and you've, you know, you've gone hard on those, um, then we would advise you in a different direction. So and and same with um the phone and stuff like there's some stuff that we would have done in a bit more depth but it's matched to an area of the, of the, the explorers books um so yeah i think that they are complementary but if you wanted to get into kind of really serious kind of uh, element of science then um yeah you could just give us a ring and we could advise you on which which part might suit you yeah, it'd actually be lovely. I think it'd be lovely to use one of your boxes, Alice, alongside if you're using explorers in the classroom, if you wanted to dive into something in more depth, you'd the opportunity to use one of your boxes. Yeah, yeah. And and particularly as well, if you're going to get a scientist to go with the box, like then you have the kind of the three like really key elements. You've got your teacher support, the books, the hands-on, the whole lot. Like that would be fantastic, of course, if you could manage that. Great. I'll just take two final questions here. Um I can answer this one myself in that um, can I presume this relates to explorers can we try out the books on Poland's online before we choose and put in book or, book orders so what I would say to you is all the ebooks are up on Poland's.ie um, as well as samples of the digital resources that go along with each of the classes um, after that it would be best to speak to your local Poland's rep if you're looking for samples of the books themselves or other access. But there's loads of resources there, um, lots that you can use now in the classroom before you make your decision. So we're trying to make it as easy for you to, you know, get a real feel for using those resources. And that's why they're up there in Poland. And then Kira again on Explorers, can the textbooks for explorers be used for book rental schemes in the senior classes? Oh yeah, they're they're ideal for it. There's no there's no writing elements. All of the activities can be done outside of the book, so they're perfect for a book rental scheme. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, I think that's all the, the questions that's come in. And I'd like to first of all thanks Bridget in the background for uh, helping us with the webinar and helping it run smoothly. Um, thank you all um, for joining us this evening and thank you all the presenters, but thanks especially to all the teachers who have had a long day in class and are tuning in again on screen to listen to us talk. So I hope you found it useful um, and take, take care and stay safe. Thanks a million. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.